Hey guys, it is Tamara. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Welcome back. Today is Friday and we're going to be talking about some of the mental illnesses and personality disorders that may entail pathological lying. And I think this might be an interesting video for you because I've never talked about the specific things I'm going to talk about in today's video. So let's just go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel for those who are subscribed. And for those who are new, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button so you can stick around with us and be a part of our growing community. The benefits for you in today's video is I'm going to point out some cluster B and cluster C personality disorders. And I've never talked about these on my channel. I may have talked about the specific personality disorders, but I've never talked about it in a clinical sense. So I'm going to bring that up. I'm also going to focus on some mental illnesses that may automatically include compulsive or pathological lying. So on Wednesday, we talked about pathological lying. I talked about ways that you can deal with it, ways that you can manage it, ways that you can um, kind of get around it, right? Monday, which I'm pondering posting that video again. Um, but Monday I talked about what it is and what it looks like and some of the characteristics. And so in today's video, we're going to talk about some mental illnesses and personality disorders that includes pathological lying. So first I want to start with bipolar disorder. Okay. Bipolar disorder is a mental illness and it is based on uh, fluctuating moods. Okay. So basically swinging between two poles. Okay. One is depressive. The other one is manic depressive and manic. Depressive is the um, characteristics of depression, right? So sometimes there's insomnia or hypersomnia. Sometimes there's poor appetite, right? Whether you're eating too much or not enough. Sometimes there's suicidal thoughts. Sometimes there's tearfulness and irritability. Um, other times there's like this um, obsessive rumination about certain things, right? Maybe your past, maybe a decision that you made. Maybe self-esteem is lower at this point. Your confidence level is down right? You have a little bit of a hard time making decisions and concentrating and, and really being at your best, you know, your best level and, and being at a high level of functionality. So that's depression. Okay. The other side of that pole is mania. And I'm going to put some characteristics over here, some criteria so you can actually visualize and see mania. Um, mania sometimes can be hypo or it could just be mania. Okay. So hypomania is, you know, let's just say mania is way up here. Okay. And hypomania is like right here. You're not quite manic, but you're like right about here. So you experience some form of mania, but it's never quite full blown mania. So you have those two poles. Okay. So that's the way I want you to conceptualize bipolar disorder. Depression is one pole and mania is the other pole, depending on whether or not it's hypo or just straight up mania. Okay. In bipolar disorder, if you have an individual who really gets these high periods of energy and, you know, really um, sharp thinking and they're really a uh, fun loving and happy go loving and happy go lucky is what I'm looking for. If they're like, you know, really energetic and it's almost like a motor is running on the inside of them, then you most likely will get gambling behavior. You most likely will get risk taking fast driving, uh, multiple sexual rendezvous for some people or affairs, uh, substance use that's really risky. Like we're talking meth and, you know, tons of marijuana and tons of alcohol and, you know, so really risky, unhealthy behavior that pushes you to the edge. It pushes you close to really needing to be hospitalized. If you have an individual who's manic, then you're most likely going to see some compulsive lying because, it, you know, let's just think about it. If you have an individual who's engaging in gambling and they're spending money and, you know, they're really spending up their bank account and their hard earned 401k, then, you know, is that person going to come out and say that that's what they're doing? Probably not. They're probably going to lie. And so one lie leads to the next lie leads to the next lie. And before you know anything, the person has told about 900 lies that they have to lie to try to cover up the first lie. <laughs> so, you know, mania can actually be one of those mental illnesses where lying becomes a compulsive thing because again, they have to lie to cover up a lie, or sometimes they have to lie to get themselves out of the problems that their mania has put them in, if that makes sense. So sometimes bipolar disorder does include lying. Now there's other mental illnesses as well that may include lying, but the purpose and the reason behind lying could be different. 
So for bipolar disorder, lying, compulsive lying may not be to harm anybody or may not be uh, pathological in and of itself. It might just be, again, a behavior they're doing to cover up what they've done or to cover up another lie. Um, so pathological or, or compulsive lying with a mental illness like bipolar disorder or depression or anxiety may not be a personality trait or an issue, but rather just something that that person is going to and utilizing to cover up some things that they've done, all right? So it's important that we separate those two. Now, another thing I wanna separate is a mental illness versus a personality disorder. A personality disorder is really a set of characteristics that are firm and fixed. They have developed over the lifespan and they have been influenced by two things. One is genes and the other is environment. So environment and genes come together and it influences the individual over their life course, right? Over child development, adolescent development, and sometimes even young development, young adulthood. Uh, once that individual, you know, is born and they go into this, you know, this home environment with their parents or whoever's raising them, and they begin to hear things and see things and experience things. And, and then on top of the natural progression of the genetic makeup, right, the genes and the biology, you can actually become an individual that has a personality disorder based on genes and environment. And so that's a personality disorder and it's really hard to medicate that. You actually can't. It's like trying to medicate somebody who's naturally funny or trying to you know medicate someone who's naturally, you know, uh, what's the word? Um, intelligent and astute and, and really good socially. You, you can't medicate that. It's a part of who they are. It's a part of their biological makeup. They were born that way. That's a personality disorder. A mental illness actually is a different thing. And a mental illness is something that can actually be medicated. Um, it's a problem. It's it's an illness. It's like a heart disease. It's like diabetes, right? It's like you know chronic migraine. It's a medical condition that needs to be treated. If the right medication and the right counseling, you know, uh, collide and and become a team, then that individual with a mental illness can be um, helped. They could be actually fully delivered from their condition. A personality disorder is not like that. Again, it's a set of characteristics that are firm and fixed after you know having a certain life course. So I wanna clarify those two things. Now the uh, cluster B and C uh, personalities that I wanna talk about are personality disorders. It has nothing to do with bipolar, nothing to do with mental illness. So let's jump into that. So cluster B is really a clinical term to describe a set of personality traits that are unpredictable and overly emotional. And the three personality disorders that are characterized under cluster B would be borderline personality disorder, which is BPD, histrionic personality disorder, and narcissistic personality disorder or narcissism. Now, these three disorders have been, have been categorized under cluster B traits. And this is in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. It's scientifically researched. It's scientifically proven that these three personality disorders are actually uh, one and the same. They all have a similar foundation. And that similar foundation is being unpredictable and overly emotional. Now, the cause uh, for these three disorders uh, isn't 100% known, but research suggests that genes and environment, here we go once again, has a lot to do with it, all right? We all know what borderline personality disorder is. Uh, we all know what it is, you know, what it, you know, what the characteristics are. Impulsivity, uh, we have unstable and stormy relationships. We have suicidal thoughts and suicidal behaviors. We have self-harm, we have risky, risky behaviors, risk-taking. There's a lot of anger management issues that need to be um, taken care of with BPD. Uh, we also have an individual who doesn't have a, a stable sense of self, okay? They don't know who they are. They, you know, there's a lack of identity. Um, it may feel that when there's peace, the person ups the ante. That's kind of how they do it, right? They up the ante, they make things worse, right? It, it almost feels like the individual may be screaming for attention at all times. When there's peace, there's going to be some disruption. You go along, there's peace, there's going to be some more disruption. So that's BPD. Can it be treated? Research suggests that it can. Is it very hard to diagnose and treat? 
Yes. Uh, and there have been a lot of issues with BPD and we'll cover that in a different video, but BPD is a part of the cluster B. All right. Another one is histrionic personality disorder. Histrionic personality disorder describes an individual who is very emotional. Okay. They're theatrical. They cry loud. They talk loud. They get angry in a loud fashion. You know, everything is huge and flamboyant and everything is out there and everything is just loud and in your face. Like, Histrionic personalities can be very, very over overwhelming. In fact, uh, about seven years ago, I worked in a community mental health sy system, um, in a community mental health sis center, <laughs> I should say. And at that center, uh, there was an individual there who had histrionic personality traits. And, you know, uh, he would always come in. It's, it's mainly diagnosed amongst women, very rarely amongst men, but he fit this category like a T, uh, to a T. And uh, this this young gentleman was uh, 19, 20 years old, um, came from a very emotionally unstable environment. Mother had BPD, father was a narcissist, alcoholism, the list goes on. Um, he was not only uh, placed in the foster care system, uh, but he was also adopted a couple times as well before he ended back up with his biological parents. By the time he got to me at the community mental health center, he was just histrionic all over the place. Like everything was loud, everything was flamboyant. You know, he never claimed to be uh, gay or transgender but he would always come in with lipstick on and uh, he would wear pink tennis shoes and he would just like add some weird crazy things to his wardrobe he would wear big hoop earrings you know another day he would come in with dirt all over his face and dirt all over his clothes it's like he had to do something that exaggerated and stretched to things and it just felt like he was a sitcom you know um, it felt like he was just really acting in his own movie and uh, that's a history on personality. It's unpredictable and it's overly emotional. It's something that is a part of who they are. And, uh, you know, it's like if you're going to be their family member, their friend, their therapist, their lover, you know, this is something that you need to be ready to accept because it's not going to change overnight. Medication can't change that. So it can dot, it, it can deaden it, it can kill it, but it's not going to change it. Um, and that's the sad part. So the last personality disorder after cluster B is narcissistic personality. And we all know what this is. Um, I have a ton of videos on this channel that talks about narcissism. So um, keep in mind that, you know, narcissists are also unpredictable and overly emotional. Uh, they may not outwardly show it all the time, but inwardly, that's probably what they're experiencing. Some, some, some um, uncomfortable feelings and some things that they're wrestling with. And so they may be very avoidant and very emotional and unpredictable, but in a different way. So uh, if you go through my channel, you'll see if you scroll down the video section, you're going to see a lot of videos that I have on narcissism. Okay. Now the next would be personality traits, cluster C, and these individuals are also emotional, but in a different way. They're very obsessive. Um, you know, they kind of have circular reasoning and circular thoughts. Um, they're really um, impulsive sometimes. Uh, other times they're emotional and they don't know how to get those emotions out. So they're repetitive and they like patterns. Some of them um, like order and predictability and structure. And um, But these individuals also need help. Uh, they can't be treated by medication or counseling. Those are two difficult things to implement into their world. The only time that individuals uh, in cluster B and C want to get help is if other things in their life is falling apart. Like they're losing their job. They were fired. They're getting a divorce. Their kid is walking out on them, right? Something like that pushes them into counseling. But for the most part, uh, cluster B and C individuals, they don't think anything is wrong. Now, let me go over what's a part of cluster C. Cluster C would be avoidant personality. We also have obsessive compulsive. And then we also have um, a dependent personality. So dependent personality disorder uh, really is an individual who um, engages in uh, dependent behaviors, right? They can't do anything without the support and the foundation of somebody who's really structured and uh, responsible and mature. They really do rely on other people. They rely on other people to do things for them. They rely on other people for their emotional stability. They rely on other people for their thoughts and the way that they perceive life. They really are like wounded children and they go away and they hide, right? Uh, you guys have probably seen uh, some examples of scared children where they go and hide under the couch 
or you know they cover their eyes like I don't want to see anything oh my god I don't want to see it that's kind of how a dependent personality is right they don't want to face reality alone they need somebody else to be with them the avoidant personality kind of similar this person avoids reality they avoid relationships they're lonely and yet at the same time sorry guys there's traffic outside my window again I apologize uh, these individuals the avoidant people uh, or individuals with um, individuals with avoidant personality traits I'm trying to say uh, they you know may avoid people but at the same time they want people okay they want social interaction but they avoid it like they're they're kind of in limbo they you know they know what they want but they don't know quite how to get it okay and the obsessive compulsive individual is the same way they obsess you know they're compulsive they do things to reduce their anxiety they create anxiety for other people because again they're unpredictable in some ways um, in some other ways you know they're emotionally unstable they engage in obsessions and patterns that are repetitive you know it's really hard for them to step out of their comfort zone so these two clusters B and C may very well uh, uh, you know, they might really include pathological lying, but the lying may have a different foundation of why. Okay, so why they do it may be different. Cluster B, they may engage in pathological lying to manipulate relationships, to, to, to influence things in a way that they feel is healthy for them, right? I don't know why they engage in those kind of behaviors, uh, but for the most part, Cluster B, they're constantly trying to like heal their inner wounds, right? So their lying may be a way to protect themselves. Their lying may be a way to manipulate. That's Cluster B. Now, Cluster C, pathological lying may occur there for other reasons, right? Maybe, maybe they don't want to be dependent but they are so they have to lie to cover up their needs um so i think my point in this whole video was uh, just to highlight that there are different mental illnesses and personality disorders that includes pathological lying it's not always a narcissist and it's not always a sociopath uh, sometimes you know it's individuals with bipolar disorder sometimes it's individuals with you know um very intense anxiety the reason for the line is what's important for us. So if we're trying to figure out who are we dealing with here, what kind of person are we dealing with here? The number one question really should be, why are they doing it, right? And uh, your, your goal should be to figure out why. Now, you may not wanna figure out why, and that's totally fine. I don't think you should drive yourself absolutely bonkers trying to figure out why. But sometimes if you can figure out why, you can understand what kind of personality you are dealing with. So um, I hope that this series this week was helpful for you. I definitely will come back to this topic uh, because I think it's a topic that's going to be helpful. I'll post an article in the description box below that focuses on pathological lying. It's an article that I wrote years ago, so I'll bring that and put it in the description box. I'll also add another video that I did on, on pathological lying. It went viral uh, a year or two ago um, because I think a lot of people just, they're realizing, okay, I'm dealing with a liar here. Nothing's getting better in our relationship. So I'll post that video. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the like button and go ahead and hit that bell button as well so you'll know every time I post a video so you won't miss anything. All right, have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.